Yeah, okay. So you have a set of furniture from Ikea, and you have all the correct parts. You have all the correct parts, but you assemble it incorrectly, or not uh, elegantly. You, you, yeah, there's, imagine sticking the legs on wrong, or whatever. Yes, here comes Nava. Uh, oh. So, regarding the syntax, it's like that kit, that furniture kit that you get and you have to put together with Allen keys or wrenches, uh, whatever. And um, you give it a whirl. No instruction, no manual. Who needs the manual? Who needs the manual? And you put something together. But is it the right way? I mean, you could be off a little bit. You know, you could have put something on... <laughs> Like that. Uh, so let's let me examine. Let me examine what you have assembled so far, or rather, what you have amassed as parts to the syntax of self-love. Mirror. That is a Bible term. Mirror. There is a mirroring action. Something about infancy. What is it about infancy that is so innate to you that you have difficulty seeing? Now, this is something that you don't necessarily have to answer. And I find, um, I mean, I can just imagine that you would have difficulty. Even composing any kind of answer, be it written or even verbal, which I would prefer if you could verbalize an answer for this particular question. I know, though, it would be an impact. It would siphon more... It would siphon more something that you might not possess in the near future. You might. Which might not. I know how composing these messages go, okay? I'm putting myself out there just. Uh, I'm putting myself out, out there almost the same as you. Almost the same as you. I mean, what the fuck am I? <laughs> I haven't published anything. Well,. That is a lie. I've published videos, but I haven't published any uh, textbooks or novels or whatever. Essays, so to speak. Not that, not that I haven't written essays. Not that I haven't written books. Textbooks. Manuals. And theses. Theses. be a nobody for now. I'm picturing your eyes. I know you... I've heard you say you don't like to be photographed. So, I'm trying to... I'm trying to picture your eyes. I realize this shoddy device is poorly capturing this image that is an image nonetheless it's mainly the audio which I intend to deliver to transmit those words are right mirror you talk about things how the mother or how the neighbor woman or the teacher, the English teacher, or is it the Latin teacher? Gazes upon you. Now, the key element that you have, and you've kind of left it out of, uh, or you do sort of have it there in the mix. 
of the assembly of the IKEA furniture, which is the syntax of self-love. The defining syntax of what is self-love and how is it cultivated? How do you cultivate self-love? It has much more to do with infancy than you verbalize. I say verbalize. You do realize this thing, I presume. Is presumption a right term? I have to wager that you actually realize something that you don't even realize. Now is when I use the visual montage because I wish to direct your eyes. I wish to direct your attention to something that you frequently direct your attention to, so I imagine. Maybe some montage. For I have yet to construct my own. This is yours. Behold. The Anthropos altar. The magical child. Behold the kid. The infant goat. Kid, thou hast fallen in love. It is not to emphasize self-love which as a term is muddled, it is as muddled as the term goo and as almost useless as the term hope. Although I get what it refers to, I sense that I get what this refers to, self-love. No, the emphasis is not on self-love and it is not on the folks that have self-love. It is the folks, such as in this anecdote of a neighbor woman down the street who comes over to visit the family and looks into the infant's crib. What does she experience when she looks into, when she gazes upon the infant? What do you experience when you gaze upon the Anthropos altar? Define it. Put the syntax to it. Here you are. What you experience love for children, love of children. It is because Roberta because these adults these adults to be looked upon by these adults as a child these particular uh, adults who have retained this love for children true admiration simple and pure recognition of beauty to merely recognize that the child is beautiful Is so innately that you forget it's there, or you forget that it's absent from others. It's severely, severely absent from many others in this world, on this planet, with the with the so-called capacity for love. 
the so-called capacity for self-love. No one can love themselves if they hate children. <laughs> So many fools, foolish adults that hate children. They hate the sound that they make. They hate their freedom. They hate their disobedience, their misbehavior, their fearlessness. other attributes that children naturally demonstrate. They hate this in children and they hate this within themselves. That is the problem. This is why they're driven to narcissistic deprivation. This is why they lack self-love. Because in truth, humanity, whatever, a human animal is a child is the magical child and they it is it is the nature of the gift for the receiver to have the freedom to decline but this but no age no passing of time child within this is a high esoteric subject verging on taboo for those that do not have the capacity to carefully consider their words which I I sense that I do. And anyone who is gentle enough to love children and give them the gaze of admiration. That term is valid. Looked upon as a child. From an older child that recognizes your youth. This is essential. No. It's beyond essential. It's like existential. This is existential. And why the human races are in such a dismal state today because they they've been trained to hate children when the parent is violent to the child not only is the parent demonstrating such a capacity to be a big old brute Force your will, force the parent's will onto the child who cannot defend himself. Like, really, you wanted to be a parent and you couldn't figure out how to do it without striking your children. And the effect of it is what modern society demands. It demands obedience. It demands fear of authority. And that's what you're giving them. Well, you also might accidentally, fortunately, you might accidentally teach your children how to whoop ass, how to kick some ass. It's, I mean, for whatever that may bring about. I mean, 
the unfortunate thing is that as children are beaten for being children, when children are beaten and ridiculed for being children, they start to hate the fact that they are a child, perhaps. At least what I sense in folks. My peers, when I would say about the age of 12, my peers talked about, oh, this kind of age they want to be. And in fact, there was a literature exercise where we had to write some kind of imaginary passage. What age would you like to remain? If you could stay one age, and I said, oh, I'd like to be the age of 12. And all my classmates were well above the age of 18, at least 18 and older. They could not fathom being a child all their life. They could not fathom being anything but an adult with all these privileges. And that's kind of the thing of um, beating kids is that um, you give the impression, perhaps, maybe not, in, in, you, it's possible to give the impression that they wouldn't receive such a beating if they were a big person like you. So they can't wait to get big themselves so they won't have to deal with you. In fact, that is the truth. Once they turn 18 or whatever, they can finally free themselves from your oppression and your authority, which is what you desire to do. And you also struggle to do this. I'm speaking to parents. Well, why am I even speaking to parents? I'm not even going to see this. I know you two aren't parents. But we can just... Oh, we can... Pleh. Plum. To give a little bright, a little scrutiny. Why not? Why not be a little harsh? Because this is, this is what we're talking about, okay? I mean... Anyway... the love for children which is the missing element it is the missing part of the syntax like the part of the, the assembly kit that i mean you have it so innately yourself look again look at the anthropos altar no for real now i'm not going to put the montage up you should have this up and have this accessible and if you haven't paid it a tribute lately which i would doubt you can Still, pay it. And you can still deliver it a healthy dose of your attention and your reflection. That is part of what the child sees when they actually ex encounter an adult who loves children and will share that love with the child. The child can l learn to love themselves as a child. It's not that you just merely love yourself. You love the fact that you are a child. And how beautiful that is. How beautiful children are. And you included among them. Your beauty is in your childhood. And I don't see it anywhere else. I don't see it in the folds of, of wrinkles. And sagging flesh. It just sags upon something that is still there. I don't have to use this loftiness. I don't even care so much for lofty talk. That's it. Lofty talk. Oh, lofty. I'm on such a high loft. I'm up in the air. And my feet are not on the ground. No dog is mine. I hear you. Boo woo woo woo. Wonder if that's getting caught or not. Well, we'll find out. I'll find out. So what do you know? That's 
what's being reflected. And what you also reflect in your life. I mean, I don't think you can go... You can truly go through your adult life at all. Unless you have transmitted that gaze. Naturally. In the spontaneous encounter... better retain this capacity how parents so easily you can't see yourself I can't see myself ah, I'm not speaking to parents but if I had something to say to parents I would say this do you parents realize that you look at your kids like this most of the time this is the face you give your children not you but parents uh, have you seen this from your parents? No, I'm not gonna make another face, but I could. And this is what many children have to see. Adults making scary, hideous faces at them. Being a big bad guy. So adults hate children. It's a huge war between generations. And this is why the Zinash, what the Zinash play at, in an early um, passage, in an early chapter of 1984, Orwell. So, um, Winston Smith, the main character, is uh, in his apartment and he finds a discreet spot away from the telescreen where he writes something. Anyway, he feels he's busted when his neighbor knocks upon the door. And it's, it's just a neighbor, he finds out shortly enough, and she said, Good evening, comrade. Do you have any razor blades that we can borrow? And I'm paraphrasing. And he says, ah, okay, yes. Here you are. Here's a razor blade. He says, thank you, comrade. Also, our faucet is drippy. Winston goes over and checks out her pipes or whatever. Anyway, apartment across the, the hall. And she's got two children. And he also works with uh, the father at um, the ministry. Whatever ministry they have. They were, the ministry of propaganda or whatever. The ministry of truth. Yes, that's what it was. The ministry of truth. And anyway, in this encounter with um, Mrs. Whoever's children um they start running into the kitchen with um toy toy guns and such toy little cork guns and they're shooting it off at winston and they're saying you traitor you traitor you you are conspiring against big brother and these are the children right in 1984 and um, you're a spy for the the fake bad guy Manual Goldstein. <laughs> like, You're a spy for Goldstein. I'll report you. Later on, when Winston finds himself in the Ministry of Love, he's a prisoner, captured by the Thought Police, he runs into the father. He's like, Oh, how did you end up in here? He's like, Oh, yes, yes. So, a pair, my children had um, snitched on me. I forget what the term is. They had tattled the, my children on me and a pair and I was saying down with big brother down with big brother in my sleep and they used their <laughs> um, eavesdropping technology devices whatever <laughs> they got they got eavesdroppers for Christmas and the children eavesdropped on this on the sleeping dad who was screaming down with big brother in his nightmares <laughs> and they reported their old dad 
anyway, and Winston remarks upon this in, in the narrative format. He says, yes, the children, um, the party uses the children against the parents. This is true. For you see, when the children can no longer rely on their parents for showing them genuine love, genuine love for children, love of children. They rely, they, the only remaining um, substitute is better than nothing. And that substitute is the Zenosh propaganda. Zenosh propaganda, the Zenosh cartoonists. Ugh, I have fairly ugly riff against it's cartoonists. Want to rob your children's attention. Want to rob people's children's attention. With those hideous cartoons. And so what do you expect? What else can you see? Can't you observe this? That the world is in severe lack of this love. Of this adoration. There is, n the folks hardly consider putting um, such an altar together in their own homes. And when parents typically put all these photographs of their children, that's just part of narcissistic deprivation. They go and get these photo shoots done where they do up their hair and they put a little bow tie and whatever. Put them in a nice little dress and have a call professional photographer to capture photographs of them and edit the colors and whatever. Do do a little touch up these days, no no doubt. Even anyway, the whole staging of these photo shoots belches belches do indicate perhaps that I am wobbling off a course here. What else can I say? You get it. I think you get what I mean. And um, all I wish is that you receive this as delightfully as I do. Because I'm, I don't know, I'm not here assembling the love seat either. I'm not providing the full syntax either. I'm merely pointing over here and saying, look, look, that part. That's the part of the syntax that you had left out, that you're leaving out of this discourse. It's kind of there. It kind of is there. But... You're stalling with re the repetition of one term over and over. Self-love, 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 self-love. Okay, you say it at least a dozen times, and I'm only 30 minutes into this one. I mean, that's before you can talk. Not mine. I'm talking about yours. BWW49. The hot plates. Hot meals. On wheels. It's great intel, but let's flesh it out. Allow me to help you flesh it out, is what I'm asking, is what I'm requesting. I have no more to say. But perhaps for another time. Um, perhaps. Only if you listen. But you must also demonstrate that you are listening.